Dallas, or in the early days, was uh, basically a medical wilderness, not having libraries or laboratories or a pathologist in the city. And when he uh, came to Dallas uh, to start his practice in 1902, there was none of that here. Ophthalmologist Edward Carey was also horrified by the hodgepodge of unregulated medical schools. As dean of the two-year-old University of Dallas Medical Department, there was no University of Dallas. He raised standards and in 1903 awarded only four diplomas. Carey engineered the school's affiliation with Baylor University and led the new Baylor College of Medicine. After serving as its dean, as a private physician, Carey built a tower to medicine, the Medical Arts Building. In its 18 stories, physicians and dentists of different specialties could collaborate and practice in the same place. But Carey had a more ambitious plan, to make Dallas one of the greatest medical centers in the country. What held medical schools back was a lack of funding. Carey approached Carl Hoblitzel, president of the Interstate Theater chain, which included the Majestic in Dallas. Ed Carey and Carl Hoblitzel were really visionaries because they realized some 75 years ago that if Dallas were to be a great city, it had to have a great medical center. Dr. Carey uh, had been president of the American Medical Association and in his travels had seen that uh, the medical care or health, health care in other communities was better than what we had in Dallas. So he uh, convinced Mr. Hobblezell to bring together the business and civic leaders in order to uh, create a better uh, medical uh, atmosphere. They obtained the charter January 21st, 1939, establishing Southwestern Medical Foundation. Well, he knew that it was going to take a heck of a lot of money to do this the right way. The foundation itself um, grew and grew and grew along with, um, in the early days, with just, just friends and everybody got behind it and it, because everybody knew that we needed a, a, a medical facility and a medical school uh, for the Southwest because it was so antiquated. Uh, and so he and Baylor parted ways, they moved to Houston, and uh, he started Southwestern Medical College. And um, here we are today. Nineteen forty three, the U.S. was at war. The military needed physicians. So Carey approached the Army with an offer to educate doctors for military and civilian life. In exchange, the Army obtained materials in short supply and built a plywood city. So the brand new Southwestern Medical College started strategically located next to the teaching hospital Parkland. In 1949, the foundation signed over Southwestern to the University of Texas system and with the community continued to support the school. When I came here, uh, I uh, looked for the medical school and uh, I inquired at a service station as to where the medical school was located. The attendant gestured in the direction of a railroad overpass, and I drove there and found only abandoned shacks, garbage, and a broken down building. I returned to the service station and told the attendant that I had followed his instructions and indicated what I'd seen. And I said, I didn't see any medical school. And he said, that was it. More or less for a short time, I was the only full-time member of the Department of Medicine. It was lonesome in a certain sense. <laughs> there was nobody else in the department except myself. And there were very, uh, 
uh, meager resources available to recruit anybody. But the one resource we had were the students. And it seemed to me that we might have an exciting experience if I could recruit the students uh, to uh, enter an academic career, send them away for training and bring them back. And this proved to be uh, a very successful program. There were a few key people like Don Selden who said this institution is going to stand for excellence. It will grow for sure. It will do all the things it has to do. But as it does it, it will stand for quality foremost. That was part of the founding culture of the institution, and it persisted uh, right the way through uh, the decades. And the shacks serve their purpose. After the school spent 15 years in wooden buildings, the community came together to build a new campus next to the county's new Parkland Hospital. Nineteen sixty three put a worldwide spotlight on Parkland, where the medical school doctors worked to save the life of the president. Against long odds, Governor John Connolly recovered from his life threatening wounds under the care of medical school doctors, and later paid tribute to them at the foundation's dinner. As a result of the terrible events of nineteen sixty three, the surgery and anesthesiology staffs at Parkland and UT Southwestern published the first medical text on trauma care. The Foundation's commitment to health care for the whole city led to the construction of a new St. Paul Hospital next to the medical school. Across town, the Foundation led and supported the creation of a new hospital, Presbyterian. It was not a creation of the city, but of the citizens of Dallas, uh, seeing a need for their community. Uh, and they saw that to be a great city, uh, Dallas would need a medical center to train its uh, physicians, uh, and also to be a source of improvements in healthcare through research. And so, uh, as we look around the country and see other great medical centers, yes, over time, they have attracted uh, the interest and support of their communities, but in Dallas, that's where UT Southwestern Medical School started. In 